good morning and welcome to the stream i am late to gaming and today we're picking up with chapter three of 2064 read only memories uh, if you've been following the stream uh, you would know that yesterday we uh, ended the day after receiving some unsettling news so it turns out that at least according to information we found after hacking into the Parallax network, we learned that um, Hayden has not been kidnapped, but has in fact been murdered. Apparently, the uh, what we thought was a break-in and kidnapping was in fact a planned hit on his life, and oops. Um, it was planned hit on his life, and the uh, vandalism that happened afterwards was actually unrelated, other than a couple members of the uh, Human Revolution had heard that the apartment was empty, and so they thought it was a good opportunity to vandalize the apartment, make a statement, um, because of you know who owned it, and you know they they certainly disagreed, I guess, with Hayden's work, uh, but not to the point of of kidnapping and murdering him. At least that's that's the prevailing theory at the moment. That's kind of what we're what we're working from. So we're picking up with chapter three. This is right after you've learned about Hayden's demise. Turing has um, kind of gone back to the apartment on his own, very upset, uh, depressed even. We've just uh, arrived to the apartment, and this is going to be our first kind of interaction with Turing once finding out about Hayden. Oh, you're back. You know, Hayden was a brilliant programmer, far ahead of his time. I am a machine. And intrinsically, I do not have all the glands and visceral chemical reactions that make humans so emotional and brilliant. But his code is a flawless replication of that inside my own personality algorithms. I don't think I've ever felt this... this anger. Oh. So maybe what I mistook for depression is actually anger. It fouls my processors and fills my RAM with frustrating, half-finished plans of revenge. <laughs> my motherboard burns in my casing from how little I can rest. I'm in pain and I can't make it go away. I've said it before about Turing, and I'll say it again. This uh, certainly feels like a much more advanced AI um, than I think what even Turing realizes that he is. <sighs> I do not like the thoughts I'm having about the people who did this to him. I... I could. I can disable those modules. But if I turn off every emotion I don't want to feel, what does that make me? Would I still be me? I'm always... surprised, although by this point I shouldn't be. Uh, I'm always surprised by the the insight into the human condition that this game um, has. Um, maybe that comes with a study of what it's like. Not what it's like, but a study of what it means to be human. Or what it means to have true intelligence. Um, but I really, I really have been impressed with some of of the story, I'm I'm really 
enjoying the game for that reason. I think it's 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 not quite what I expected, and that's that's in a good way. If I were human, turning off my emotions would be seen as extremely unhealthy. There is a wealth of information on the MeshNet about human psychology. I just don't know how much of it applies to myself. Yeah, that's kind of a fascinating thought. And I'm not really sure if any of it would apply. I suppose it would to some extent, depending on the programming, I guess. Either it's way, Hayden deserves my grief. It's nearly impossible to know. It is my way of honoring him. It may be the only way I can. I offer it freely. Did you see the jade plant? Its death is unfortunate, but fitting. Yet another thing to be guilty for. Genitor. You know, it's it's been easy to forget that this whole story is about Trin coming to you for your help with finding Hayden. It's so so common, I guess, in these stories that you're the one seeking help. You're the one who has you know started off on this journey to find Hayden and to find your friend that uh, it's easy to kind of <clears throat> fall into that same mindset but uh, you know Turing just reminded me that this is all his journey this is um, you know the, you're just there to help and that's it's kind of a different role in this in these stories especially when it's a, a bot that you're helping I need to finish this don't know what I'll do afterwards, but I need to see this through. What does the truth mean anymore? What does it matter? Will finding the truth bring back Hayden? Will it fix the pain they've left me in? No, it won't. Yes, you're right. Knowing the whys and wherefores will bring closure to this. I could use a measure of closure. I think for now we should keep knowledge of Hayden's death between you, Tomcat, and I. It may give us an edge if the people we seek don't know how much we've already discovered. We'll talk after you've had some time to rest. You likely need sleep, and I need some time to... I need some time. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. So, presumably, this is... I'm sleeping at the moment, I guess. This is... Okay. So now I guess we're the next morning. We're also inching closer and closer to Christmas. Good morning. I try... Now that we are both refreshed, I feel it wouldn't hurt to recap our progress and determine if any changes should be made based on our successes and failures. Let's talk about how things are going so far. Turing certainly seems to be in a better mood. Um, maybe thinking things over overnight and helped him. 
since your journalistic efforts are a big part of why I originally recruited you, we can start there. Your inquiring mind has been a huge boost in our journey thus far. As a wrong, I can't talk to people as intently as you, so I must say I'm quite grateful for your skills in that regard. You know, I started to comment yesterday that it's surprising that in a lot of these exchanges, Turing seems to be the one who takes, that kind of takes the lead. And now that I'm reminded that this is his, um, his story, effectively, he's the one who is initiating all of this. It makes sense that he would be the one to um, be doing a lot of the talking. You're just, you're really just there as a sidekick, and it's, it's easy to forget that. I guess we all like to think of ourselves or the characters we're playing as the, the focus of a story. You're diligent in your day-to-day -day work as well, which further grounds my hope in you. Beyond journalistic persistence, let's take a look at how we've performed in other responsibilities. Specifically, our choices in overcoming obstacles. Our first major hurdle proved challenging, but we made use of our surroundings and found a creative avenue. Furthermore, I am pleased with your utilization of nonviolent methods. Eliminating any excessive risk should allow us to move swiftly. Finally, I was quite impressed by your ability to adapt on the fly, as they say, and perform so well when thrust into a sudden situation. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to discuss how we're getting along with our companions and allies along the way. It's important. I was very impressed with your negotiation abilities with those kids. We got our data cache, and they went on their way, and hopefully learned a lesson, too. <laughs> Jess is a bit of a harder read, but she did agree to help us out in a big way. As long as her brash nature doesn't tempt you to lash out, I think things will go smoothly. Detective Rivers was good to involve as well, and I can tell you enjoy having a familiar face around. She could prove to be our greatest aid, as long as we make it worth her time. No funny business. I wonder what he means by funny business. Tomcat seems to genuinely care for our cause, and I have no trouble with letting their expertise guide us. Yeah, Tomcat seems to be invested in finding out what happened to Hayden. I think uh, maybe them haven't worked together. I'm not sure if they were actually friends, but they definitely seem to, to care about the situation and what is going on. Out of everyone else, they seem to be easiest to get along with, too. And finally, you and I. The road has been bumpy. We're both a bit out of our element, and things are stressful. Let's both remember that we are on the same team here and try to turn things around for better as we continue our search. Unfortunately, we've just about run out of leads. Perhaps Tomcat was able to find something of use in Parallax's network while they were inside. Oh yeah, we didn't really get any news. Tomcat found the video and that was the the real topic of conversation. I've rationed every available resource I have. 
perhaps you have some bright ideas? You're a big shot investigative journalist, right? <laughs> Trading definitely is getting frustrated, which is nice to say. You have an incoming call from Tomcat. Forwarding video and audio. All right, let's see what Tomcat has to tell us. Morning. Karen, how you been doing, huh? I'm fine, Tomcat. Thank you for your concern. Well, okay. Just say the word if I can help out in any way. You hear? Of course. In fact, I was hoping you might have a lead for us to start working at. Otherwise, we're down to canvassing Hayden's address book and seeing if any of his contacts have an idea about who might have had a desire to target him. But that's just fishing in the dark. Well, I pulled a fair amount of data from the Parallax service before they managed to kick me out, but it'll take me a while to go through it. A lot of it's unrelated. TPS reports, maintenance logs, juicy meat for other corporations, but about as useful as dirt to us. <laughs> I wonder if TPS reports is just a reference to the movie Office Space, or if that's actually a real thing. I've, every time I've heard it, I've just assumed it to be an Office Space reference. It'll take me a while to decrypt all of Hayden's files, but maybe we'll find something there. So, no, I don't have as much as a whiff of a trail on who's behind this. So, I, I recently got a strange request from a friend of a friend. Someone's been messing with the articles of a news organization named Augmented Eye. It seems like the network security head there is asking around for cybercrackers to help figure out how their reports are getting changed. The original files on their servers are untouched. In their system, everything looks peachy keen. But when you view the site from the outside of the network, things are changed up. Interesting. A word here, a phrase there, it's subtle, but often has a big impact on the article's tone. Someone with deep access to Parallax's mesh net is changing what's being shown. I ain't sure if it's related, but maybe y'all can head down to the main KCOB offices and try talking to the gal that runs Augmented Eye. Her name is Zim. I ain't got the time or the desire to stick my nose that far out for a stranger, but it seems like your kind of deal. Hmm, it does seem to be a bit of a stretch. But if we have to wait for you to work on the data we've collected anyway... Alright, I'll pass the word along that you'll be in sometime today to stick your noses in. <laughs> and I'll send y'all word as soon as I get anything worth hunting down. Excellent! Thank you, Tomcat. We are grateful for your continued assistance. <laughs> No problem, Turin. Are you sure you're gonna be okay? Maybe you should take a little more time. You've been through some shit in the past few days. I appreciate the fact that she's showing such compassion and uh, concern for Turing, even though he's just a rom. Maybe that's an indication that she views him as being much more I said I was fine. Thank you for your concern, but I am fine. Well. I have already handled the reality of Hayden's death. It's time to move on with the investigation. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on you. I'm, I'm just worried. So, uh, I'm here if you need anything. Understood. I apologize.
apologize for my tone, Tomcat. We'll be in touch. Okay, we have a lead, however tenuous. I've highlighted the Cos IO Corp office building on your map. Also, while we were talking to Tomcat, I received an email from Dr. Fairlight. Displaying. This has been one of the longest. Um, just dialogue exchanges, I think, of seeing the game so far. Ah, greetings. I hope you'll forgive me for a voice-only message, but I'm undergoing my treatments and would not call myself presentable for a video call. Still, I wanted to inform you of an idea I have while looking into our mutual acquaintance's disappearance. I haven't had any luck with my contacts inside Parallax, but I was reminded of an old friend by the name of Melody Flores, who may know more about the nature of Hayden's research. She's the owner of Flower Cybernetics, and Hayden has been known to work closely with them. Okay. On projects like a... involving the intersection of Parallax's systems and the implants that Flower designs. Sounds like a reasonable lead. Melody and I are no longer on speaking terms, so I'm afraid I can't introduce you. But perhaps the intrigue of Hayden's little robot will get you entry into her home. Sounds like it very well, Matt. I hope this lead serves you well. If you need anything else from me, I will be in and out of the hospital room where we met for the next few days. I will send word if I have any other insights or discoveries. Yours, Dr. Yannick Fairlight. No knowledge of Hayden ever working with Flower Cybernetics, but now I'm starting to understand just how little I really knew about his research. Maybe this melody can reveal more about the purposes of my construction. Hayden must have kept my development secret for a reason. Hopefully we can talk our way in. I have highlighted Melody's home on your map. Okay, we can now either follow Tomcat's lead to KCOB or Fairlight's lead to Melody's home. So I've got a choice to Up make to here. Where to go first? Tomcat's led us in the right direction so far. But Fairlight has resources, and his tip might end up being more relevant. It depends on what you want our focus to be on, in terms of tracking Hayden's trail. Should we follow the media, or the tech? It's fitting. They're the two factors that make Neo SF so unique and wonderful. We explore them both to the fullest. There's no way we won't be closer to the answer. Okay. So finally, we're to the point of being able to do something in this chapter. So I have the two options. Um, so we've got, let's see here, the um, Cos IO Corporation or the Flower Mansion. So I agree with Turing in that I think the um, the Flower Mansion is going to be the more related, I guess, the more useful place to go. <laughs> I definitely think it's um, 
following the tech is a, probably a wise choice. However, I typically in these situations <clears throat> find myself wanting to do those sorts of things last. Um, I don't think this is a game where it's going to advance the story if I trigger something and knock me out of seeing another part of the story or another part of the game. This is often what I'm worried about, and so that's often why I pick the things that I think are less, less likely to um, advance the story. But in this case, I don't think that's going to happen. I still am going to go with the Casio Corp. Um, <clears throat> I just feel like I'd rather do that first and then then explore the um, kind of the tech avenue afterwards since I think it's going to be the more meaningful um, Here we are. more meaningful to the uh, the overall investigation the cos IO corporation office building it looks like most of the businesses on this block are a part of the same corporate coalition under cos IO Well, perhaps, at the very least, it means it's unlikely they're the ones interfering with Augmented Eyes articles. Not impossible, but unlikely. Generally, the companies in a coalition don't have a whole lot of overlap. Augmented Eye is a news app focused on local tech and culture stories, with an emphasis on hybrids, rights, and cybernetics issues. None of the other companies in the coalition cover news, so they aren't related at all, which is very much standard practice for these groups. They have nothing to gain by inviting companies with whom they compete. And thus, none of them would benefit by trying to undermine Augmented Eye's credibility as a news source. Yes, another news organization would be the most likely culprit here. Alright. <clears throat> so let's see what we have to interact with out front. Plant, a couple plants. Front door. We've got a welcome sign, a window, another plant, another plant. Wow, lots of plants. Yep, so a fancy car. As soon as we can hook the headphones to it. Very nice. With Zachy Pete. Jeez. Okay. I don't think the planners are going to have anything Bolitis worthwhile. Bolitis Riparia, one of the more popular display ferns in recent times. Expensive, given the cost of caring for it. The species is native to threatened tropical forests but it became a popular import after being endorsed by a former child star turned conservationist. Hmm. I wonder if that was for reference to anyone in particular. Let's see if any of the other plants have details, no? So some of these I can interact with more fully. So what about this one? Nope. Can't talk to it. Hmm. I can, but there's no use. A 
bunch of security guards. That's more heavy security presence than I would expect. <clears throat> This seems like an odd thing to mention. See if we can use headphones with the sun. Not necessary, okay. It's hard to know when you choose the um, use command if it's going to try taking it or try actually using it you know it's like if there's a button or something on it seems like there's a bit of inconsistency with that um, oh go up I, I nearly missed that there are trees growing on top of the building oh that's neat all is here but just the, the, the roof trees it's a nice little detail okay I suppose can we talk to the Sun we can it's not gonna tell me what it says I guess we should head indoors the mesh net says augmented eyes SF office is run by an individual named Zinn and Tomcat confirmed she's expecting us. Let's make sure to keep your other news outlet theory in mind, and we can follow up on it afterwards. All right, let's see who this Zen character is. All we have to do now is head up and talk to her. No shenanigans this time. I don't recall any shenanigans on my on my part before. We've got a desk, an IK-47, a jade plant. Okay, so this is Zen, so I'm inside the office. Well, there's a lot here to look at. Probably can't hook the headset to it. <laughs> Like a nice view out the window. Seems like a really nice view for what I would have assumed is a uh, um, not a real high um, high profit magazine or, or media. I guess it's a newspaper or website. I'm not even clear. We got here a photograph, picture of a toupee. That is a very odd thing. Ah, all right. We've got a plant. Here we've got a super family link. The color scheme definitely reminds me of the um, Super NES. Yankees Peninsula reminds me of Yoshi's Island. Water Rash. Water Rash. Hmm. Can't think of what that would be. Super Slug 3. <clears throat> We've been to the Super Slug. I'm also not sure what that would be. And down here we've got a stash of games. Let's see if we've got more. Duck game. This game gives me the urge to start quacking uncontrollably. Is something wrong with me? Mm. Okay. Oh, the J plant is on her desk. Got a monitor. Well, 
having trouble hitting the, there we go. I wonder why it has a weather update that doesn't necessarily seem like something that would be on just an office like this. Check out this ROM, the Executive Series ROM. For high level account maintenance. And last but not least, we've got Zen. Sharp dressed. All right, let's talk to her and get this kicked off. Oh, hello. Welcome to Augmented Eye. You must be the journalist my network admin said would be showing up. Have a seat. Would you like a drink? Yeah, she's definitely. Not, she doesn't look like what I expected. She certainly isn't dressed like I would have thought. My assistant will bring it right away. Maybe this is a much larger and more successful um, paper than I realized, but look, than I thought. I'll start off by saying I'm a little uncomfortable about bringing in another journalist to look into this. Whatever you dig up, I'll have to explain to the rest of the press. But it's still better than the other options. Chances are I have another corporation scoping out my territory. If they aren't in the coalition, they'll be expecting a corporate spy, not a news hound. If they are in the coalition, it won't look good for me to send in my own reporters against my allies. Even if I do end up being right. So if I'm damned either way, I'd rather it be by the media. At least then we can fight back on a familiar battlefield. Now, what do you know about our problem here? Yep. That's the long and short of it. My network admin is pulling their hair out over it. I'm not going to pretend I understand everything they say, but from what I understand, the changes to our articles aren't being made from inside our network. The versions on our servers are still the originals, but at some point after they hit the mesh, they get changed. I'm hoping that you can do some digging. Maybe hit up your contacts and get a lead on who might be doing it. Even if I have to get answers from the nightly news, it will be a big help. Okay, so let's see here. What kind of changes? Why are you so sure it isn't in such a... Alright, let's start at the top. Mostly little things. Word choice, tone of the writing, things that make the writer appear more or less extreme on a topic. I'm interested in that. I think that's a very kind of subtle but insidious way of using existing media. Um, a media that has a an audience already. Maybe that has a level of uh, respect. Uh, using it to spread a slightly different message. So far, almost all of the edits seem to be making our articles more positive on new technologies coming out, and more critical of organizations like the Human Revolution. Makes sense. That's actually what tipped us off. A harsh criticism one of my writers made about the Human Revolution protests was changed to be downright vitriolic, and I had a hell of a time putting out the fires. My writers and readers aren't exactly fans of them, but I'd rather not pick fights with the Human Revolution if I don't have to. So... I guess I'm not, but my network admin assures me it's all coming from somewhere else. Yeah, it seems like if it's coming from external to the network, 
she's fairly unlikely to be an inside job because it seems like it would be easier for an insider to, um, to just be changing things in the internal system. They told me that they tore out all of the routers that broadcast to the mesh and replaced them with fresh ones. All kinds of tricks involving IP addresses and DNS changes that I'm not going to even begin to claim to understand. I pay them big bucks, so I'm inclined to believe them unless you dig up something that tells me otherwise. Alright, yes, get her input on where I should start. Not really. My admin says that only someone with intimate access to Parallax's network protocols could make these kind of changes as something passes across the net. Personally, I think it's a clever hacker rather than someone inside Parallax itself. The public trust rating of Parallax makes them look like a saint among wolves, so their control over the mesh network provisions is strangling. It's trivially easy to set up ROMs to use a different OS than LIPS or a different MeshNet protocol without that trust. Or, you know, Parallax is abusing its power to spread pro-tech propaganda. That's all they need to. I'm sure you'll be a good journo and bring me back the right answer. Alright. I, didn't, I don't actually feel like she answered my question there. I know tin hat conspiracies aren't an ideal start, but it's the best we can do with the info we have. Anything else I can tell you, off the record? If you want it on the record, it'll cost you your firstborn and a really good cigar. I wasn't going to tell you this. If it gets out, I'd have to answer some really hard questions. Yes? So, if you didn't hear this from me, you might want to go check out TMI Entertainment and Charlie Nova. We had a reference to Charlie Nova earlier, I think, in the, in the first That's day I played. Say. And remember, you take a bite out of him with my name as your defense, I drop you fast. Like what? There isn't much more I can tell you about Augmented Eye, really. It seems unlikely since you're running it. It's a fairly simple and straightforward operation, if I say so myself. We started off in Venezuela as a sleek current events and news organization in 2055, almost 10 years ago now. We focus on more in-depth reporting of on-the-street happenings, on top of major news. We are one of the few good ones left. Once folks in other cities saw the type of reporting we do, they all clamored for it. They invested in the right places, and it paid off. Cos IO Corp is happy to have us here in the OSF. It wasn't until hybrid tech started hitting the public sphere that we had to make any changes to our model. All of that said, I can't see why anyone would target us. Unless they're just trying to embroil us in a mudslinging match with the human revolution, and there are much more direct ways of making that happen. Hmm? What? Not wanting to answer prying questions from my coalition board isn't a good enough reason? Cause I'd really like to avoid that. And look, you've covered culture wars, right? My journalists are good, but they're mostly good at gadget reviews, implant releases, not taking too many stims so they remember what they did at raves for the after-party reports. 
This needs an investigative journalist with serious contacts, not tech personalities. The fact that my network admin recommended you to me means you probably know the right people. Now, does that cover it? I'd like to remove my nose from your ass. Well. No, don't bother. In hindsight, I probably should have been a bit more circumspect about speaking to you. Plausible deniability and all that. I won't ask you to lie in anything you write. But do remember, you got in contact with me not even second-hand, but third-hand. I certainly didn't sick you on anyone. Wink wink, nudge nudge, or whatever. If you need anything else, have your person get with my person. Don't come here directly. Now, I'd show you the door, but you know the way. And this isn't the only fire I'm trying to put out. Good luck, and goodbye. Okay. So. Well, that see was what more confrontational than I'd have expected. Considering she was the one needing help. She never brought you that water, either. Oh, that's a very good point. Is it always like this? Very true. I will admit that I am interested in the possibility of a link back to Parallax. If all of this really is due to somebody manipulating the mesh net on the inside, it may give us the leverage we need to find out what happened to Hayden once and for all. Yeah, if it's someone who knows anything about that. That said, I will take care not to get my hopes up. We should make no assumptions when investigating, lest we lead ourselves down a false path. Anyway, seems like our next step is... Wh what the... What just happened? Whoa... That's in? She was defenestrated. Defenestrated. Emergency services are already on the way, and we are severely ill equipped to help her. We should head back to her office and see if we can determine what happened here. Perhaps we can still dispense justice. Yeah, I didn't expect this. This is definitely a, a turn of events. So I can't really interact with any of the people, which is strange to me. Hmm. It looks like the desk has been cleared off. Yeah, there's definitely something happened. Let's take a look around, but be careful. The police will be here soon. So the shredded plant. The bot has been damaged. Even a ROM like that doesn't deserve an end like this. TV has been knocked off the wall. Her personal computer is not password protected at the moment. Give me a moment to look through her files. Best to keep your fingerprints off of the keyboard. That's smart. Mm, most of this isn't very interesting. 
committee reports, financials, article submissions. Oh, here we go. According to this email between Zin and her network admin, her lead on TMI Entertainment is a little more solid than she led us to believe. The admin ran a web crawler looking for changes in writing styles. Some blog posts by their head anchor Charlie Nova stood out like a sore thumb. Apparently he's a bit pompous, if in an affable way, and his blog usually just details his day-to-day -day life. But ever since the human revolution has been in town, he's been smearing them with more venom than you'd expect, considering how neutral his on-air reporting has been. Zinn seemed to think he was just complaining about the protesters fouling up traffic, and whoever is manipulating these posts spun it to make him look critical of the movement as a whole. Just like the augmented eye journalist. This Charlie fellow is the one we need to talk to. Charlie fellow. I think the only other thing that was effective, well, well let's look at the desk. The broken window. My thermal sensors only detect a single set of lingering footprints, and they end almost three feet away from the window. Oh, wow. Considering the density of this glass, I can't imagine Zin jumped from that far and managed to throw herself through the pane without help. But who could have done it? I don't see any obvious marks on the floor or any what? other thermal hotspots. It doesn't look like it. We should go. There isn't anything else here. Police are almost on the scene. Son of a <laughs> And Lexi's here. I should have figured the two of you would be here. You just won't stay out of trouble no matter what I say, will you? I'm not in trouble. Oh yeah. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't drag you in for questioning right now. I assure you, Detective Rivers, we are merely in the wrong place at the wrong time. We had an appointment with Sin to discuss a possible lead and found her office in this state of disrepair. Of course you did. Damn it. Fine, fine. Get the hell out of here before anyone else shows up. We'll chat about the case more when I'm not busy scraping bodies off the pavement. You hear me? Certainly, Detective Rivers. I'll forward you a report of what we know immediately, and we can speak further at a later time. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Get moving. Okay. So that went better than I expected. Ooh. doesn't matter anyway. Detective Rivers has every bit of information that Zinn gave us on that computer. Her investigation will not be hampered by our absence, whereas ours is halted if we're stuck giving answers she can just as well get from a hard drive. Has it occurred to you that whoever threw Zinn out of that window could be after the same thing we are, except to silence the story rather than to get it out? We have little time for fooling about and must get to Charlie Nova before something happens to him too. I have highlighted the main Neo SF offices for TMI Entertainment on your map. Let's go.
Okay. So, interesting. I wondered if I would still be able to go to... Well, I can. I could go to the Flower Mansion now if I wanted to, I think. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make sense. I think I should go ahead and stay with, with this line of investigation. So we'll go to TMI, which presumably is TMZ. Hmm. I hope some pity for me still remains, considering my recent tone, because I'm honestly not sure where we should start. I suppose we should just ask the receptionist to point us to somebody who can answer our questions. See what he knows. Honestly, you do have your own mesh access, yes? I'm quite certain you can handle all the casual searches you might feel like making. We hardly have time for me to blather out every bit of exposition you desire when you could just go look it up on your own. Fair enough. If you think it will save time, I can continue to rattle off these facts when you ask for them. I just ask that you keep your queries to a minimum. We don't have a whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. Let me pull up the information you requested. TMI Entertainment is a relatively popular celebrity and gossip news conglomerate. They own OK Today. Mm -hmm. They did a good job transitioning from the traditional media models of television and news to the net-based model prevalent now, pioneered by their digital newspaper, OK Today's The Scanline. Some might call their programs rags, but opinion on the mesh seems more favorable than not. They stick to mostly good-natured prying and lean away from the seedier nastiness that paparazzi can get up to. As such, they have a positive relationship with many celebrities and regularly get exclusive scoops that keep their ratings up, despite their refusal to peddle in the darker side of the celebrity news circuit. Seems like it could be a good business model, especially to contrast the typical paparazzi. Charlie Nova is TMI Entertainment's most popular TV personality. He's gotten consistently high ratings for almost a decade and isn't afraid to tell you about it. The chatter on the mesh paints him as a bit arrogant, but in that loud, back-slapping kind of way that a media star can get away with. He's best known for hosting Star in the Stratosphere. It's one of those talent-seeking reality programs. Apparently, when TMI can't organically discover enough celebrities, they just manufacture them. Hmm. I guess that's one way to do it. Oh, and also, according to this blog, Charlie's hair is flawless. <laughs> Okay, so in this room, we have a door, a plant, a table, a desk plant, a sign, and the receptionist. I thought there's much use in checking out everything in here, so let's just talk to the receptionist. great at this. She's 
on the other side of the room. Don't bother the talent though. She hates that. Okay. So this room looks more interesting. We've got a news rom. We've got an assistant. We've got a newsroom employee. Crime cinematographer. Got a couple cameras. Going around the room, we've, oops, we've got talent show host. I'm definitely not supposed to talk to him. We've got a producer. There's a lot of people. Some monitors. June Obama, Balmer, Anna, Balmer, Anna. More cameras. Okay. So let's say let's start with the assistant. Okay. Let's try the newsroom employee. Hey, you over here now. Oh, I just got yelled at. What are at. you doing bothering my people? I thought I told Nina to cancel all my appointments for the day. I swear that girl couldn't find her ears if I taped them over her eyes. <laughs> at least she makes a decent cup of coffee. Yes, I am. And if you don't mind, I keep the show running here, so I'll be brief. What are you doing in my building? We've been given a lead on a story that involves one of your personalities, Charlie Nova. Someone has been manipulating his articles on the MeshNet and turning them into scathing attacks against the human revolution. We're trying to track the culprit and we need to talk to Mr. Nova to hunt down further leads. You let your ROM do all the talking for you? Must be one of those new interrogation modules all the fresh meat rave about. Hmm. Of course I know someone's been modifying Charlie's articles. I'm tracking them down myself. What I want to know is why I should help you snatch the scoop out from underneath me. That is a good question. Super hacker twists MeshNet news for personal political vendetta. The clicks basically farm themselves. Zin? Augmented eyes, Zin? What does Zin have to do with this? She's the one who gave us the lead to begin with. Then, someone threw her out of her office window. We figured Mr. Nova might be next, and we wanted to get to him first. Holy shit. Fine, I'll let you talk to Charlie. Someone is trying to kill people over this. I'd rather it be out and done with as fast as possible. I mean, shit. We're in entertainment scene. Nobody should die for that. But hey, watch yourself with Charlie. He's a pompous clown, but he's my pompous clown. Yeah. Does he recognize us? Huh? Keep it civil, or I'll throw your ass out and figure this out on my own. Now get on it. I need to make some calls. 
Okay. So I'm sure this is him. This is the guy we just talked to. This is Sympathy. And Talent Show Host. With all things, everything, I'm June Fowler. Oh yeah, that's right. So yeah, I'm sure this is Charlie. Fantastic! How fantastic! I just love your ROM. Not quite as stunning as mine, but still pretty grand. Very sleek, very clean. Bravo. Oh, uh, Sympathy is doing that thing where she waves at me to hurry things up. Right down to brass tacks then, I suppose. Wait! I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Charlie Nova, host of Tonight in the Stars yeah. and Star in the Stratosphere. I doubt he forgets to introduce himself very often. But you already knew that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Of course. What can I do for you, hmm? Oh, you flatter me. Yes, you do. I can't imagine you've come all this way just to get my story, have you? After all, I've already published my very own splendid 100% original autobiography, Like a Nova. That's not a terrible title. But I suppose I can give you a quick rundown, even if sympathy is giving me the stink eye. I grew up here on the mean streets of Neo-SF, but my jocular nature and striking countenance got me scouted for a few small product advertisements. And the rest is not so ancient history. Now I'm the host of the largest celebrity news show on the mesh, and I couldn't be happier. It's all thanks to my swarms of fans, though. They're the ones who count. Yes, any additional information on your station would be greatly appreciated. I feel like this guy is going to talk for forever. Well, it's the best damn network on the planet, I can tell you that. Oh yeah, of course. We put out top-notch news and entertainment, but with real heart that our competitors just can't match. But if you really want to know about TMI, you need to know about sympathy. It's her pride and joy, after all. Sure, she can be a little acerbic, and sure, she calls me a poofy-haired oaf all the time, but you can really tell she cares, you know? But it sounds like it. Deep down. Hmm, I'm not sure if that throat-cutting gesture she's making is a signal to move to another topic or a threat against my physical well-being. Probably both. So, let's move on. What next? Oh, it may have come up in the last lunch meeting we had, but Sympathy assured me that it was some kind of technical glitch, and our support people were on top of it. They're top-notch. The absolute best money can buy. The bee's knees. So I don't think there's anything more to say on the subject. That's very upsetting. I hope you've passed along that information to sympathy. I'm certain our tech people will be able to find the culprit in short order once they know enough about it. I really don't know what I have to do with it, though. 
<laughs> I like the fact that you keep using different names. And that is supposed to mean what? I'm not sure if you're trying to imply that I had something to do with this, or that I'm being targeted for some specific reason, but if you have an accusation to level, then make it known. My time is far too important to be wasted on beating around the bush. All right, that's enough. Charlie has a show to get ready for. He's told you everything he's going to. So get the hell out of here. But well, I didn't learn anything. If you find anything more interesting than what you've got, come back and see me again. Director. Remember, I'm the victim in all this. I never know the, what order to use. Oh man. I'm gonna use the regular milk because I want to advance the story. I feel like I could use this super spoiled I I milk. Told you to beat it. Or do your ears you get just some not interesting work. result. Ha! Ah, that's cute. I promise I don't bite. I just... Sometimes I think Charlie's hair gel seeps into his brain. But he brings in most of our revenue. Now, Scram. You know how to get in touch with me if you need me. I guess just show up here. It's not like he gave that us contact not info. Well at all. We need some kind of leverage to get Mr. Nova to give us the information we want. I'm certain he knows something. Don't you agree? Talking to him, I took the opportunity to look into his history more thoroughly. It turns out he did a series of promos for a local Hassy bar early in his career, and some fans still spot him there from time to time. It's a long shot, but frankly, everything about this case has been one long shot after another. Maybe we should question the people at this Hassie establishment and look for any dirt we can use to put some pressure on Mr. Nova. There must be something. It's the only path I see. The Hassie bar is located on Market Street, near the Genus Clinic. We can head there whenever you're ready. I've already been to the Hassie bar. So, uh, I know I haven't been playing for very long, but I actually think I'm going to wrap things up here this morning, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes in. I've got some stuff to do today. Um, 
I think I'd like to get, a, get an early start with that. So we're gonna call it quits. I will not be back tomorrow morning, uh, but I will be back Sunday morning if all goes as planned. I do not expect to play any more of this uh, between now and then. So I should be picking back up where we left off when I resume on, um, on Sunday morning. I do expect to be back um, today at lunchtime around noon Eastern time uh, streaming more lake from the Xbox. I'll be picking up on uh, day three there for another short stream. So uh, feel free to join me there if you're interested. Um, if you want to know when I'm going to be streaming, you can always follow me on Twitter at late to gaming I try to always post a few minutes before I um, kick off a stream to let everyone know. Um, and then, of course, you can always subscribe and receive notifications. I thank you for listening in. Um, always glad to have people joining me for the stream or picking up the video later. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day ahead. And I will catch you in, uh, in a few days. Thanks.